but the most persecuted victim of the Scientologists, speaking here at an anti-Scientology rally in Clearwater, was Paulette Cooper. Paulette Cooper wrote a book back in 1971 called The Scandal of Scientology. Now, the Scientologists did not want you to read this book. To try to silence her, the so-called guardian's office of the church cooked up a scheme to steal some of her stationery and make it appear that she had sent the church office two bomb threats. I read from one of the forgeries. James, this is the last time I'm warning you. I don't know why I'm doing this, but you're all out to get me. I'll give you one week before Scientology is an exploding volcano. I'll knock you out if my friends won't. Right. And as a result, I was arrested. I was indicted on three counts. I faced up to 15 years in jail if I was convicted. The whole ordeal fighting these charges took eight months. It cost me $19,000 in legal fees. I went into such a depression. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't write. I went down to 83 pounds. Finally, I took and passed a sodium pentothal, or truth serum test, and the government dropped the charges against me in 1975. Another church plot against Cooper was named Operation Freakout, intended to get her placed in a mental institution until she stopped writing about Scientology. Church officials even launched a graffiti campaign against Cooper. They put my name up on walls in New York City where I live with my phone number so people would call me. They put my name on pornographic mailing lists so that I would get all kinds of disgusting mail. You see, for years I was saying that these types of things were going on. And people thought, well, what is she talking about? This is a church. And finally, after 11 years, I see that everything I said was true and that Scientology turned out to be worse than anything I ever said or even imagined. We were frankly surprised that two high church officials agreed to answer the various charges against the Scientologists. The Reverend Kenneth Whitman is the 32-year-old president of the Church of Scientology in the United States. David Gaiman is worldwide head of public relations for the church. I asked him about the church's campaign to discredit Cazares and Patterson and Paulette Cooper. Yes, it sounds dreadful. And as a matter of fact, it turned out to be rather dreadful. If you judge by the net result, absolutely true. You set out to smear Gabe Cazares, the then mayor of Clearwater. Sexually, that is, smear him with sexual innuendo. Harassed his wife on the telephone. The Church of Scientology. Bizarre. I, I'm not, I cannot defend the intention and the statements within this documentation, um, within, within this particular document. The two church leaders went on to explain that those attacks were made only in response to perceived threats to the existence of the church, that some overzealous members were merely protecting their religion. Still, we found those actions difficult to understand. You must admit, if I lived in Clearwater, if you lived in Clearwater and weren't a member of the Church of Scientology, you'd say, what in the world has this got to do with religion? I think that, we, that, that uh, part of us, part of we, the Guardian's office, mm -hmm. fell into the arrogance of the end justifies the means, which is, which, is, which is wrong and alien to Scientology, just as it is wrong and alien to other groups who have gone down the same stony road. It is a crisis point for us. After confessing wrongdoing by church officials, the two nonetheless insisted that the church's founder, L. Ron Hubbard, had nothing to do with such methods. So I read from a Hubbard policy letter. If there will be a long-term threat, you are to immediately evaluate and originate a PR campaign to destroy the person's repute and to discredit them so thoroughly that they will be ostracized. That I have never, ever seen an issue. And I'm familiar with this documentation. I have never seen such an issue. Well, I have... Have you seen that? Yes. Yes, then this, at this in this form, is... May I see it in just a second? Yes. It says here, don't ever tamely submit to an investigation of us. Make it rough, rough on attackers all the way. You can get reasonable about, reasonable about it and lose. Sure, we break no laws. Sure, we have nothing to hide, although you will agree that you did break laws. In the time that that was written. 1966. Right. Banish all ideas that any fair hearing is intended and start our attack, the Scientology attack, with their first breath. Never wait. Never talk about us, only them. Use their blood, sex, crime to get headlines. 
don't use us. Yes, that's a sense. That's yes. Yeah. Your man. That's right. Gaiman still insisted we were taking Ron Hubbard's words out of context. He said that Hubbard was against the breaking of any laws, and the Reverend Whitman elaborated. And our position is this, that if any Scientologist has broken the law, then he's going to be dealt with per the law. What you seem to be saying, in effect, is to Clearwater, mea culpa, we were wrong, our shame, now let's move ahead. Exactly. exactly. And you want us to believe you? No, not, not even so. That's why we want you to look. That's all. Look, observe for yourself. Judge us by our deeds and by who we are and what we are and, and, and what effects we produce in society. What the Reverend Whitman is saying is that in future, the church will undertake to atone for past sins by positive contributions to Clearwater. The people involved in Scientology speak for themselves, which is, which is our best representation. That sounded fair enough to us. So we sat down with three church members suggested to us by Whitman and Gaiman. Nancy Cass, a former U.S. State Department Foreign Service officer. Mario Fenninger, a concert pianist. And Diana Alfano, a longtime resident of Clearwater. And from the start, it was apparent that although the two church leaders seemed eager to plead guilty to church wrongdoing, they apparently had not communicated any comparable sense of guilt to these church members. You say that ethics are very important to a very, psychologist. Very, very to me. Well, then please try to help me understand it. The ethics involved in trying to smear the mayor of Clearwater, in trying to get the job of the fellow who runs the St. Petersburg Times, all through and all acknowledged. In the name of religion? Doesn't that make you say, hey, my religion would do a thing like that? In the name of survival of a religion? If these people are trying to knock the religion down, what do you do? Sit back? I mean, look, you know, this is not the first persecution of a religion. And I mean, you really believe that Gabe Cazares and the St. Petersburg Times and Paulette Cooper were trying to destroy Scientology? Paulette Cooper right, has, I do. Therefore, you commit crimes going after Paulette Cooper. You forge letters that bring her up on federal charges that she's going to be a bomb thrower. You, you no, destroy no. her name. You, you uh, indulge in sexual in innuendos. A church does that, Mr. Penninger? Well, I was not informed about all this, really. You read? No, I don't. You know what I do when I read that kind of stuff about Scientology? I don't even read it. Why? Because it doesn't interest me. Let the people who have to handle that handle it. Because I have too much to do, and I can't be bothered with that kind of stuff. Let them handle it. But these are people... Because we will survive. Diana Alfano has a shop across the street from the Fort Harris. You, you are aware of them. You are aware of all those facts. No. I was not aware of all the facts. I'm still not aware of all the facts. See, this is earlier. An attack on the church is not important to us because Scientology has to survive. It has to. And Scientology is surviving, not just in Clearwater, but worldwide. As we said, the church is still under investigation by that federal grand jury. The Scientologists have paid $125,000 in back taxes in Clearwater and they continue to try to persuade the skeptics there that they intend to mend their ways. The hostility against...